السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته أصبحنا وأصبح الملك لله والحمد لله لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير رب أسألك خير ما في هذا النهار وخير ما بعده رب أعوذ بك من شر ما في هذا النهار ومن شر ما بعده رب أعوذ بك من الكسل والسوء الكبر رب أعوذ بك من عذاب في النار ومن عذاب في القبر بسم الله الواحد الأحد الصمد الذي لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد والحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه يليق بجماله وجلاله وكماله وجزيل نعمائه والصلاة والسلام على أشرف أنبيائه سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وأصحابه الميامين والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اجعلنا منهم آمين <coughs> Yes indeed my dear brothers and sisters <coughs> Excuse me <coughs> عفوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many ways in the Qur'an and certainly the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam informed us about the fact that this world is a very changing world. Nothing is constant in reality in, this matters, in these matters of this world. Things change, they change, positive and negative, up and down. This is a world filled with vicissitudes and with surprises. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, shukallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore tells us, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّوا شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Perchance, that is, in your experiences of life, you may come across or encounter many things you do not like. You feel apprehension towards them. They are uncomfortable, challenging, hurtful, afflicting to you, and you don't like them. And maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put good in them because it is he who knows of course the details of his creation in the past and present and the future and we don't know and sometimes the consequences of something we don't know the consequences thereof would be very beneficial and as you know how many times in your life you have wished for something so bad and prayed for it and you wanted it and you wanted it and you insisted and you pleaded and then you were given it and then perhaps a week later and some a year later or some years later you wished you never made that prayer for that thing and it turns to be not so good for you. And the opposite, things you did not like, you wanted to escape at all costs. And somehow, in some experiences of your lives and ours, in the future, later on, that which we ran away from and wanted to escape from turned out to be very beneficial to us. And now we love it and we are comfortable with it. Subhanallah. And thus Allah says, of course, Subhana, Wallahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamun. Verily Allah knows and you do not know. And therefore, first of all, my dear sisters and brothers, as a consequence of this, those of us who inside of our hearts and minds, we have that loving surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in what he destines, in what he decrees, 
subhanahu wa ta'ala, those who have that loving surrender, they are the ones whose lives, on average, are the most stable and the most moderate and the most secure and peaceful relative to those of us who do not hold within themselves that loving surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards what happens to us after we make logical, rational, shar'i efforts towards that which is good. And we surrender inside of us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The persons like that have lives that are very stable on average more than anyone else. Man radhiya falahu al-ridha wa man sakhata falahu al-sukht as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches. Second, my dear brothers and sisters, Allah also informed us and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us as I mentioned earlier that this world is not the home of ultimate, continuous, uninterrupted, constant security and peace and happiness in the way we perceive it. But it is a world intended to be one of changes and of trials and of afflictions as therefore someone had said of the saintly scholars rahimahumullah ta'ala la tastaghrib wujud al-akdar ma dumta fi hadhihi ad-dar la tastaghrib wujud al-akdar ma dumta fi hadhihi ad-dar in other words he says rahimahumullah ta'ala as long as you live in this world you must always accept affliction, expect afflictions. Don't be disillusioned, don't be surprised when you are challenged. Let me put it this way in a nice word. For this is the nature of this world. As long as you are in this world, you have to get used to that. You have to get used to rain and shine, summer, and winter, spring and fall. As long as you live in this world, you must always expect that inside of you and in your life. There will be in your lives spring and summer and fall, fall and winter. It is normal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm sorry, uh, about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the same beautiful saintly scholar would say, rahimahullah ta'ala, إِنَّمَا جَعَلَهَا مَحَلًّا لِلْأَغْيَارِ وَمَعْدِنًا لِلْأَكْدَارِ تَزْهِيدًا لَكَ فِيهَا Subhanallah. In other words, when we look at what happens to us and around us, and we feel uncomfortable so often, and we prefer, at least prefer, not to be subject to calamities and trials and that which is uncomfortable. Well, uh, the scholar, rahimahullah ta'ala, the wise teacher, rahimahullah ta'ala, says, therefore, إِنَّمَا جَعَلَهَا مَحَلًّا لِلْأَغْيَارِ That is, God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, verily made it, that is, this world, mahallan, a locus of aghyar, of constant changes, filled, all the changes are creation, creation. And he made this world as a, as a mine, a sort of a mine for akdar, meaning turbulence and murkiness and stain. Who amongst us, amongst you, living, especially adults and up, you have lived in your life so far without ever experiencing something one time or many times or on average things you don't want and you don't like. It will never happen. It will always be that way. And why did he make it so, subhanahu wa ta'ala? Tazheed and laka fiha, subhanallah. 
تزهيدا لك فيها when we are in other words subject to these tribulations and trials and afflictions and changes all the time internally and externally it would help us especially those who seek Allah Azza wa it would help us withhold from dunya tazhidan laka fiha we become ascetic in our relationship with this world if this world has so much discomfort built in it then we would not want to be uh, we would not be trapped by the attractive dangerous attractions of this world we would want to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the constant al baqi al samad who does not change subhanahu wa ta'ala but because he made this world changing and and all of us want to stop this change to be in control of the events around us and in us and we will never be able to do that because integrated in all of that so that humanity so that especially the believing man and women learn to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the world is so imperfect when the world is so challenging that would naturally make me reorient and incline towards the creator of the world towards the true constant in existence don't we when someone does wrong to us feel at least apprehension we do so this world is meant to challenge us so that we don't become too attached to it and too entrapped by it and therefore forget the source of existence and the source of life Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in other words difficulties in our lives are meant to draw us even nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by learning to disengage with our hearts and minds from the world and re-engage our minds and hearts with God with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we would live this life despite the vicissitudes and the changes we would live this life on average in tranquility inside of us rasuluna maulana sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam in many texts and in one of these texts that i intend here spoke to us through his companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum about the signs of the latter days before the surprising fall coming up of the hour of the end of the world and he spoke of many things challenging incredible things to the extent that he says la taqumu as-sa'a hatta taraw umuran 'idhaman lam takunu tarawnaha wa la tuhaddithuna biha anfusakum he says before the hour strikes and comes you will experience matters momentous that you would have never thought of or expected or even talked uh, or even uh, entertained uh, discussions amongst you about them to the extent that some of you would say hal dhakara lakum nabiyyukum min hadhikra subhanallah until in such times you would even tell one another it didn't or did it all our nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam tell us about these things did he make some prophecies about these things he said you will say that and i know we have said that already and we will continue to say that momentous things incredible things at the levels of the spectrum of life socially mentally psychologically intellectually scientifically technologically politically militarily allah knows satarawna umuran 'idhama 
momentous things. And of the other things he mentioned also, the tribulations and the challenges of morality, for people will tend to be very immoral also, were not being truthful and not being honest would also become almost standard when the person who speaks the truth is considered cheap and low and not respected. And when the person, a person who lies and knows how to be tricky with his words is given status, etc., etc. Then the point is then they asked him, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, in those times, what would the believing person be like? In those times of challenges, especially as the hour gets closer, what would the mu'min be like? Ya Rasulullah, what would be the believing person be like? Don't you ask the question sometimes, and may Allah help us be of those who are truly of faith, what do I do? How should I react? What should I be? What should I be my response? Well, of course, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Utiya Jawami Al-Kalim, he was the most articulate and the most eloquent of human beings in speech, as he speaks few words to communicate very profound and a lot of knowledge beneficial. In this, he answered, I would suppose, in, in this very generic and eloquent response, he said in accordance to this text, Al-Mu'minu yawma'idhin kanahla. First of all, this thing. The believing person then is like a bee. A bee? Waqa'at فَلَمْ تُفْسِدْ وَأَكَلَتْ فَلَمْ تُكْثِرْ وَوَضَعَتْ طَيِّبًا Subhanallah. In these circumstances, he said, and then the true believer would be like a bee. It flies and lands on a leaf, on a flower, on a thin branch, but it does not break it. It does not spoil it. It lands on it and it does not hurt it. In other words, it does not spoil it. It does not destroy it. It does not break it. And it eats and it does not abuse. And it eats and it does not abuse. It is not excessive in eating and in using the nectar from the flower. It does not abuse it. It does not contribute to the depletion of the resources available. And with all of that, and it discharges, the discharge of it even is pure honey, that is. That's the believing person in those days and how he or she should be. And he said, and the believing man and woman would be also like red, pure gold, a piece of red, pure gold. It is put into the fire and molten. It is put into the fire. It's blown on it. And then, لم تتغير ووزنت فلم تنقص Like this piece of gold, heated, subjected to heat, to excessive temperatures, and then it does not change at all in its quality. And then even after that, when you weigh it, it did not decrease from its weight any bit. That's the parable of the believing man and woman in these days. In other words, that's the way I and you should be. Maybe we should take, and we should, rather than maybe take, by Allah's help, 
And by Allah's leave, we should take these challenges or these calamities as opportunities for us to grow and to check our faith and to check our iman and to evaluate the depth of our faith and the depth of our morality and the depth of our spirituality. That is a means for us to improve ourselves instead of a means for us to destroy ourselves. That's the way it should be. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Perchance you may dislike something and it is good for you. Perchance you may love something but it is harmful to you for Allah knows and you do not know. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring our hearts upon him Azza wa Jal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be of those who listen to the words of admonition and follow the best of them. My dear brothers and sisters, may this conference inshallah ta'ala that we all attended be one that is in the scale of our righteous deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me and you as we conclude the, today this conference May we be of those who extracted from it by His grace that which is good for us, for our souls and hearts and minds and actions and words in this dunya. And may our abode be ultimately His company, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the company of the righteous. Had I said anything correct these few days with you, that is simply the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal. Had I said anything incorrect or improper, that's my own nafs, my own ignorance. I asked Allah for forgiveness and I ask your pardon. I seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I remind you, I seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I remind you of him and yet myself forget him. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.